In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use curves in Photoshop to adjust contrast in images. Hey guys, my name is Scott and I make tutorials like this one on Photoshop, Premiere Pro, and tips for freelancing. So please do consider hitting the subscribe button and hitting the notification bell if you don't want to miss any of those. Okay, let's get right into how we can use curves to adjust contrast with our images. There's two ways you can bring up the curves window in Photoshop. First, you can go up to Image, Adjustments, and then select Curves. From there, I can start playing around with the curves graph and make changes to the image. Or you can hit Command M as a keyboard shortcut to bring up the window. I like to use curves as an adjustment layer, and to add that, you just go up to Layer, New Adjustment Layer, and then Curves. The reason why I prefer an adjustment layer with curves over simply using the curves window is because you have more control over turning on and off the curves layer if you need to. Without the adjustment layer, you're basically applying curves to the entire image with no way of turning it on or off if you need to. To start using the curves layer, you can click anywhere on the diagonal line which will add a point. From there, you can pull that point up or down to increase or decrease the contrast in an image. So by pulling the point lower, it makes the image darker, and by pulling it upwards, it makes the image brighter. So depending on where you put your point on the line can either darken or brighten certain parts of the image. For example, you can create what's called an S-curve. By placing points at the bottom and the top of the line, and then pulling the line to create an S-shaped curve. The wider the S-curve, the more contrast you're going to get in the image. You can also try inverting the S-curve, and then play around with that if that makes more sense for your image. If you make a mistake or you don't like where you've placed the points, you can select a point and then hit delete to get rid of it and that will bring the line back to its original diagonal shape. There's really three things to remember when adjusting curves. Number one, the further you pull the line upwards the lighter the image will get, and the further downward the darker it will get. Number two, if you keep everything flat and centered, the image will appear completely grey. And number three, if you were to make the line completely vertical, you would get an image that's super contrasted with blown out lights and super dark shadows. There's preset curve settings that you can play around with if you like. There's the color negative, cross process, darker, increased contrast, lighter, linear contrast, medium contrast, negative, and strong contrast. There's also auto contrast, which Photoshop will analyze the image and create an automated curves adjustment for the image. What Photoshop does is usually not too bad, especially if you're in a hurry and you just want to quickly add some contrast to an image. However, I usually like to spend a little bit more time tweaking the curves until I get it right for my own images. If you make a mistake or you don't like the changes that you've applied, you can always go back up to default and that will restore the image to its original state. There's also the RGB curves where you can adjust the color tones of red, green, or blue. Now the opposite of RGB is CMY or cyan, magenta, and yellow. So you can pull the red line upwards to get more of a red look or the opposite to get cyan. Next you can do the same with green to either get a more green tone or to get a magenta tone. And then we have blue or yellow depending on which tone you prefer. There's also a few options on the side of the curves graph here. The first one is the finger scrub tool. And what this does is it allows you to pinpoint on an area of the image that you want to adjust for curves. So you can hover over any point on the image and then look over at the curves graph. You'll see the line move to wherever your mouse cursor is over the image. If you select a part of the image, it will make a point And from there, you can adjust the curves on that exact spot of the image. Next, you can sample points of the image that are either black, gray, or white. You can do that by using the three eyedropper icons and clicking on a point on the image. Then you can sort of manually tell Photoshop what parts of the image are white, gray, or black. Be careful though, if you were to use the white eyedropper for example, and select the darkest part of the image, it would turn the image completely white. And the same would happen in reverse if you selected the black eyedropper and then selected the lightest part of the image. The next feature is kind of a fun one, you can actually draw a curved line by selecting the pencil icon. If I draw a squiggly line here, it kind of creates like this video game look to the image, which is cool if that's the effect that you're going for, but I'm not really sure what else this tool could be used for. Then if you select the line icon above the pencil icon, it will turn all of the draw points into actual curve points that you can start to adjust. 
Okay, so that's a basic overview of curves. What part of curves was your guys' favorite feature? Was it the RGB adjustments or maybe it was some of the presets? Let me know in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, please do hit the like button and feel free to share with anyone who might also enjoy it. For more information, please check out my website at scottedwardfowler.com and follow me on Twitter at Scott E. Fowler. I've also posted my other videos on Photoshop on the right side of the screen here, so please do check those out as well. Alright, that's it from me guys, see you in the next video.